Hi, this is Digital Lady Sid. I haven't done a video in a while, but I wanted to do a quick one here because Lucis Pro has been bought by someone and um, they are now um, allowing you to buy it. So I thought I would do a quick demonstration of what it will do. It hasn't been on the market for a couple of years, but I use this, uh, it, it's actually a very simple plugin all the time on my images. It can really make an image uh, look sharper. And there are times when I just need it for a certain object or part in my um, actual image. But today we're going to look at um, this image that I took at Guanaki in um, the Bahamas a, long, or a while back. And I wanted to show you what results we can get when we use this program. So let's do this real quick. The first thing I always do is I duplicate my background layer. Um, this is brought in from Lightroom and I did do a little profile change on it and just some real basic quick uh, settings on it. Nothing, not a lot. It's really nice and blue and pretty down there. So we're going to duplicate it, which I always do a control J. And I'm going to go right into the filter. Now I want to tell you that I always change to 8-bit. I don't know why, but it just seems to run smoother for me when I'm doing these videos. But you can leave it in 16-bit mode if you want. But my settings right now are all going to be 8-bit mode. So we're going to go to Filter, and we're going to go to Lucis and Lucis Pro. And this is Lucis Pro 6.0.9. The new one is 6.1.1 for Windows. Um, actually, it is identical as far as I can tell. First thing I always do is I go down here to this little arrow and I toggle it to fit and view. And there you can see the whole actual picture showing up. Now you'll notice that the enhanced detail line only shows 245 as opposed to 255. That's because there, the, there's not a whole range in this particular image of um, pixels. So it didn't go up to 255. So what I like to do usually is you, you can just do it with just one or two clicks here. It has two incredible um, sliders here that will do all kinds of things. Um, this one brings in details and this one is just smooth it, smooth the image um, any way you want. Um, but this is not what I wanted to show you at the moment. What I always do, and I almost always do this, is I go into the split channels. Now you can see that you've got a choice of red, green, and blue channels to work with here. I also always turn off the display composite image so that you can actually see these as uh, black and white channels like you would normally see them if you were working in the channels panel in Photoshop. So right now we're gonna work with the red and I have kind of fooled around with this a little bit already. So what I did is I have, I'm going to show you how to do this, not using the smooth details, which gives that more painterly effect. We're just going to enhance details. And this is strictly just eyeballing it, but generally I just, you know, I look for something that's a better image. Here's the green and I used, I think 155 on this. Again, you can, if, if, if I go way up on green, look, it, you know, it gets really bright, a little bit too much detail. But if that's a look you want, you can certainly go for it. I like it a little less over the top. Okay, and with the blue channel, we're going to go with a little bit um, more of a change. 99 here because it's kind of a flat, flat channel look right now. So when I did that, so you can see each of the channels look pretty good. Just, you know, as black and white channels. Okay, now to see what it looks like, we're going to check that display composite image back on again. And it's kind of a wild blue, which, I mean, sometimes it looks really good when you do this. But I find that's always a little bit over the top. So what you can do is there's a slider here that's called Assign Original Image Color. And you can just adjust it back and forth. And, and this one, I think I had it like around 70 and 30 or something. And... That is all I did on that one. And you can see there's a preview button here so you can turn it on and off. That's quite a change. So that is exactly, you know, all I did on this particular layer in Lucis Pro. So I said, okay, and it just applies it directly. Um, 
once this is applied, then I found that the clouds look just a little bit unnaturally white to me. So what is a really easy thing to do is to just go into the blend if slider here. And I just took the white tab over. And this is going to be a little bit hard to do, but I want you to see those clouds as I move this. If you move it, see how it takes it back to its normal color that was in the normal image? And I split this thing. You click um, by alt clicking on the point, you can change that setting. And uh, this is about what I ended up with about 190 and um, 228. Okay, I didn't change the blend modes. I don't usually change the blend mode with this uh, plugin because I don't find I like the results, but that doesn't mean you can't. And I, it's probably worth a try. But what I wanted to show you was this is without the blend if, and this is with it. It's a little bit more natural, a little bit over the top. So generally, what I did was I just kind of reduced that, um, that. Uh, opacity, that layer opacity a little bit. So there you see it. So this is um, what I did for the first attempt here. Now we're going to duplicate this again. I'm going to control J it and we're going to put it up on top. And this time we're going to do the painterly look just to show you real quick what that looks like. And then I'm going to show you what I did to get the final result. Let's see our loosest bro. There we go. Um, this time, once again, I got to look at the whole picture. It just drives me nuts not seeing it. And this time I only used, um, um, well, that's not true. I actually split toned it again. And that will go like this. Split channels. Turn that off. And I set this. Uh, the enhanced details was set for the red channel to 201. We're just going to whip through this real quick, and the smooth is 43. Okay. Okay. We're going to do this for the green. We're going to make it 30, let's see here, 175. And, and it, it, it's kind of a messy looking picture, I will be honest to say, when you're actually doing this, it, it's not exactly intuitive but it can give some really striking results. And on the website, there's a lot of um, examples for this. So I would recommend you checking out the website if you're interested in this program because it gives you some really other very good examples. Now you can see this has a kind of a painterly effect. If I go into here, you're going to see that, yeah, it's still got that kind of heavy blue look to it. We're going to go back and set it back to that 60, this time I think 67 something. 67 is the process part of the image, and 66, 34 is the original part of the image it's showing through. And then, because it was just not, you know, a little bit too much for me, I actually moved mix with original image. And this would be the same thing you would do if you were adjusting the layer opacity on a regular shot. So there you go. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to apply that. And as you could see, this is what I had done on, on this layer right up here. And what we'll do is we're going to move, um, I'm going to take this um, mask and I'm just going to move it down so that you can see what I did. So I turned on the bottom mask. I mean I turned on the bottom layer that was the sharp details and then I put um, well I got that backwards. I am sorry. I got to put the mask onto this one and we put the painterly image underneath. And now we're just bringing in the details where we wanted it and that looks a lot better. So if you, you look in, oh, look at that. There's a boat I recognize out there. If you go like this and like that, you can see there's a subtle difference where, where I've painted in, where the people here. I painted in the people a little bit more. So I wanted them to show up a little bit better. But you can see there's a lot of possibilities for this uh, plug-in. 
and I guess that's why I like it. So um, anyway, I hope that helped you out a little bit to let you see what this plugin will actually do. And if you want to hear more from me, you can go to my fun Photoshop blog, which is where I've written about this actual um, plugin, and you have the links to the um, site if you click on to that. It's at sidspix.wordpress.com, and I have a fun uh, Photoshop blog that I do called Tidbits Blog that's at digitalladysid.com, and my website is sidjohnson.com. So talk to you later. Thanks.